social is awesome here. A trick about this is you need to have the post available in order to set it up. So a lot of times, for example, when we stream to Facebook and we don't make it scheduled, we don't know what the URL is or we don't, the post doesn't exist until we start going live. Um, so normally you have to, while we're on Slate, set it up really quickly. Um, so how that works is you click on this on the symbol of the, or on the logo of the social network you want to use. Um, you log into your account here, pick the page you want and the post you want. If it's scheduled, it'll show up, but if it's not scheduled, it won't show up till you're live. Um, and then you'll hit OK here. And then you'll pick what title you want it to go to. So like, oh, this element one blue is the one I want it to fill out. Um, over there, you could get it so it'll automatically trigger itself if you want it to, um, or automatically run by itself. So that's good if you have a ticker or something that's like you want self-running instead of moderated. This will just um, do with most recent entries um, and then rotate around itself if you want. Um, um, this web interface is how um, you'll pick it out. So if you were receiving, you know, any um, uh, socials come in, this will aggregate them all here. It'll give you what platform they are on, their user profile photo, um, their name, the what they said in it, and then what time it was, and then you could select them. I would look at the video. Um, oh, you probably need to allow access on the firewall here for that. Um, then you could select the ones that you like, then you could queue them up and then view the queue there, and then you could send it directly from here. So you could have a complete separate producer on the web. Um, you could set the port up to work um, if you're outside the network, but if you're on the same network, someone could be on another computer just picking out, curating responses, adding them to the queue, and then the operator can be just going to the next one in the queue as, they're, as they come in. Um, so that's a really, really cool way to aggregate from all these different platforms into one place. Um, and you could change the character limit and stuff. Uh, you have to build the titles in a certain way so that you'll want to make sure that the text is shrinking so it'll fit everything or you're staying within the boundaries of the graphics, stuff like that. Um, and over here in edit title mappings, you could pick exactly which ones you want. So if you know, like, I will, this will pull in the, the, um, title graphic that we have selected. Here are the three options we have, and we just pick what they're coming from. So, you know, it's like the logo image, I'm gonna want photo, um, headline text, let's say is the message, description is their name, um, and okay there, and so then that'll pull in there. I think over here, if I wanted to, you know, add some flavor, like an exclamation point, like make everyone look really excited with what they're saying, you could add that there and it'll come through. Um, and then, yeah, so you'll just go through here, select all the settings there, and then that's how we'll pull in all the data over social. Log will tell you how it's working. Um, you could refresh the title if it doesn't look like it's working for some reason. Um, so that's social. Um, but yeah, you'll see it turn green when it's running, and then you can see how many entries you get over here. Um, Twitter, there's a little bit more configuration to do about like, oh, do you want retweets? Like what uh, handles do you want? That type of thing. Um, so, um, so you could set that up over here. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a really cool way to aggregate uh, comments and stuff like that. Um, now there is GT Title Designer, which is pretty awesome. I'm not going to get too, too far into it, but we'll just set up something really basic to start with. So I'll, maybe I'll reset up that data pull-in um, like on the data change. So let's say I make this rectangle here. Um, I could change the color, thickness, like a bunch of stuff for that, alignment. Um, groups and stuff like that. Um, and then let's say it had like a little image here. Um, it'll probably show up as a big image, but let's say it's that guy. Um, and I wanted to tie this in. I could just shrink this down. I could also go here to format and then just, you know, type in a number here to be like, uh, actually I want, well, uh, actually I want this to be like half the size here. So this is like, you know, like 500 times like, um, a 50 or whatever, let's say something like that. Um, so I could do it that way. I could also, you know, move it around this way. Uh, so it could be like, oh yeah, like it hanging off it like this. Um, now I'm like, oh, this is all in one layer here, but now I want the text to be a new layer. I could go here, add a layer there, add a text box, drag it over there. Now it's in that layer. Um, the layers are good because when I want to make animations, I could put it on the layer instead of every individual file. So, you know, if I want the image and rectangle to fly out, then the text to fade on, on top of it. Oh yeah, I'm just going to do this instead of the data source thing. Um, I'm just going to basically have this like silly lower fly in and then this text fade in on top of it. Um, 
So I'm just gonna set the boundaries for this. Let's make it centered, do, 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 just like that. Um, but now they're gonna have two different animations, right? Because one's gonna slide in, the other's gonna fade in and at different timing. So what I'm gonna wanna do is I want this layer to do an animation on the transition in, I want it to fly. Um, let's say duration of one second is fine. Style uh, cubic easing in out, let's say. And so now I could play it, make sure it's working out. So that looks all right. So now it takes about one second for that to fly in. So now the text, we're not, as you can see, the text is just not hanging out in the middle of nowhere, but we want it to look like it lives inside of it. Um, so we're gonna say, okay, um, the text layer, we're gonna select it here. Its animation is gonna be a fade in. Duration, let's make that a little bit quicker. I like 0.25. Here, but we just want a delay on it. So it takes a second for that to fly in. So let's say a 0.8 delay. Let's see what that looks like. So now I can hit play and then something like that. Um, I could also make it fly with it. You know, if I had it fly there in a zero delay and the same timeline, then it could kind of look like it's animating in together. Um, well, I guess the delay didn't go away, did it? Weird. Oh, that's because that's on a linear and this is on a cubic. Um, so they're actually they are moving in different speeds. Yes, yeah, so now they look like they're attached. Um, so they're like that. And now I want to set the transition out to be, you know, like a rotate. That's fun. Um, so I'll just do the same on both of these. Um, but now I could play from in to out. Okay. Oh, so that doesn't actually rotate out. It just spins in the middle of nowhere. So you could do like inner animations like that. I thought rotate would just like fly itself out, but I guess not. Um, but maybe it needs to be like a scroll. Let's see what that does. Okay, something like that. But yeah, you get the gist. Um, so you, you set that there. Um, these pages are good in case you have like a lot of data that's changing. Um, so you could have like a scoreboard that has multiple pages to it. Um, so you could set that up there. Um, continuous, I think um, this is, so you transition in and then in between a transition in and a transition out is continuous. So this is good for PNG sequences. So you can have a PNG sequence that has a perfect loop within it. So you have an animation in piece of it, a looping part of it and an output part of it. And then you just pick image e sequence loop for the um, inside part. Um, and then that'll just keep that loop if you want something animated and looping forever. Um, and then on transition in, if it was an image sequence, you would just set the image sequence here um, and it'll basically take, you'll just, to do that, you'll just make a normal image um, and then just pick the first frame of an image sequence and then it will do the rest of it. So what I do is in the case of, you know, having a transition in, a loop, and then a transition out, what I'll do is I'll make three folders for each transition and the loop in the middle. And then I'll go through here, set the transition into that image sequence, the out to that one and the continuous to the one in the middle, and then it should fly in, do its loop, and then it'll loop until I give it the, the command to fly out. So that's a really great way of doing that for animated uh, lowers and stuff like that. Um, over here, I also, so this is where I was doing um, the data changes. So because I had this linked up to a data source, um, I was able to, I, you actually use the data change out because the data change in is like, oh, I want to do something because I know I received data, but we don't actually see the data yet. So think of it this way of like, um, oh, I received, we are waiting for the draft uh, for like the NFL or something. And we're kind of like waiting around for someone to make a decision. And like we have a data source that's set up for someone to say yes or some, some way of letting us know that a decision is being made, but we don't know what it is yet. So we could make this data change in, do like a fun animation, like, oh yeah, there's a change here. And then as soon as that animation's done, then we'll see what the change is and the data will actually change. Um, but sometimes we want a graphic to actually be, uh, to have a trigger based on the data change already being viewed. So if you, like, you know, it's a graphic that starts off screen or something like that, um, we'll make it on data change out. So as soon as the data comes in, then it will trigger it instead of the fact that there is, uh, instead of before the data actually is visibly changed. Um, so that's that. And then what I can do here is make sure it's only one specific um, a field that is getting the data change in to, like I'm only moving one field here um, based on a data change. Um, so that's pretty cool. So GT Title Designer is pig. There's a lot of stuff in here. Um, you could do like word art, that's fun. Um, 
um, tickers in here you could design. These will just scroll from left to right, um, and you can do some effects here, um, like masking, like texture flips, skewing, and stuff like that, like fun kind of stuff there. Um, and then you could, um, what I'll do sometimes is a lot of times you'll get a reference image um, with text in it. So I'll just leave it here as a layer, but hidden. So then that way, if in case we need to come back and edit it and we want to refer to it, I could just reveal it to see what's still going on. So that lives with it, even though we don't actually see it happen in vMix. Um, and I've not done this yet, but you can make a QR code here. Um, so you just like make a little basic uh, QR dude there. I don't know how you change it. Um, but maybe I th maybe just do that in vMix um, for there. Um, so then within a layer, I could group things together. You know, you get kind of basic paint Photoshop things with you know backwards layers, cut and paste, um, fills and strokes and stuff. So there's a lot of fun stuff you could do here with uh, GT Title Designer, um, and it, that's a, that's a totally its own day of like playing around with um, here. Um, but yeah, there's uh, here's pretty much all the transitions you could do, stuff like that. Um, you can reverse transitions here as well in case you don't like the direction that it's happening in. Um, so you could just have that selected. You could pick what direction you're going in, um, stuff like that there. Uh, but yeah, it's like kind of just like play around with it until it does what you want it to do. Um, so let's exit out of there. Oh, and then what's cool, so let's save this monstrosity of a graphic. Um, so we could see what it looks like when we bring it into vMix. I'm just gonna call this monstrosity. Um, so now I could go over here, back to vMix. And then now um, when I bring it in an overlay, it'll do all those like weird ass animations that we made it do. Um, and then we'll do the transition out animations that we set it to as we pull it out. So it's good that it'll respond to these. Um, sometimes we will have people cr create the graphics in the beginning and they're pre-made as an MOV. So we have to, you know, manually like pause them instead of play, like instead of like have a trigger for it. Um, so we'll have like separate buttons to do things. We'd also like, W still want animated graphics with a second layer on top, so we would make scripts for them, so it would automatically fly it in, animate some text in on top of it, and then be another script to fade it out, so we'd have two buttons per, but this is nice uh, if it's a GT zip because it knows what a transition is, so once it gets a transition signal, um, it will be able to do animations based off of that command instead of it just being a video playback.